after last year's slowdown. The fund says the region is likely to grow 6% this year and 6.5% in 2013. The fund warns, though, that significant risks still remain, including another flare-up of the Eurozone debt crisis and rising commodity prices. The IMF does maintain that Asia can still limit external risks by enhancing domestic growth. And now for a closer look at the IMF economic forecast for the Asia-Pacific region, we're joined by Simon Chu. He's the regional vice president of Corner Financial Strategies. Simon, thanks for joining us oh, tonight. You're welcome. Simon, what's your take on the IMF report? I think IMF is right because the Asia-Pacific economy actually suffers a lot during the last uh, quarter of 2011, mainly due to the Eurozone crisis and the U.S. financial crisis. And this year, in the first quarter of 2012, I mean, everything picks up, the stock market picks up, and the, all the index indicators shows the economy will pick up you know, for the rest of 2012. Now, the IMF says that China needs to focus on boosting domestic consumption. How can China do this? Uh, China is it's a big uh, consumer market, and they try to use to, used to be 40% of the US econ I mean, Chinese economy is focused on exports. But due, because of the US economy slowdown and the Eurozone crisis, the exporting is slowed down a lot. So in, go, in order to boost the economy for China to maintain the 8% growth or maybe the 9% growth, they have to focus on the internal spending. So m mainly they do a lot of things based on the in constructions. In now, yeah. the, the IMF said that Asia's growth prospects have dimmed, but the region will avoid a hard landing this year thanks to its monetary flexibility. China has taken a number of steps to accomplish this, do you think China is doing enough? I think China can do more, but it, because 2012 is the election year, so they have a transitional of the political leaders. So I think they try to maintain the stability instead of doing uh, something aggressive. Now, uh, what would you say then are the biggest obstacles right now for China's economy? The biggest obstacle of China e China's economy right now, I think, it's mainly because of the political stability. Because you know, we see politically, it's sometimes it's a lot of issues like every countries, right. but once they have a transitional, smooth transitional for the political transition, I think most of the problem will be resolved from there. So we need uh, to get some political stability first. Now, the, the IMF also saying that the financial turmoil in Europe could escalate and spread further to Asia. What can we be do, what can be done against this? I think we can do very little about, about the, the, the Eurozone. But hopefully, I mean, they can come to an agreement and the IMF can put some funding or maybe some other countries can help to st stable the Eurozone as well as well we sta stabilize the, the U.S. economy. So hopefully they can stabilize the whole world economy. That's a lot of work for the IMF. Thanks very much, Simon Chu, Regional Vice President of the Corner Financial Strategies. Let's now head over to Elaine Reyes in D.C. for the latest world and national news headlines. Elaine. All right. Thanks a lot, Michelle. The United States and Japan have reached 